All right, so uh, today we've got a Turbo S Velocity four-seater that we're going to be throwing a spring kit on and walking you through some of the basics. Um, it really is a pretty easy kit to install. Um, we've already got our wheels and tires off and we've got the car up on our lift. But the main thing that we're doing with this spring kit is one, we're gonna get rid of both, ma both main and tender spring and get rid of this tender that just coil binds. And we're gonna go to a tunable crossover setup. So you're gonna be able to have a crossover in there in the front and the rear so you can tune your bottoming resistance separate from your ride height and preload. So set those to the side. I've already got my lower bolt loose. I'm gonna leave it hooked up because these do have an internal spring in them. So it's kind of nice to be able to extend it all the way to help back your preload off. Um, one tool that it's helpful for backing your preload off is gonna be just a, like a quarter inch punch. So you can put them in these in these holes up here that are in the preload nut. Um, this one happens to be loose enough that I'm just gonna turn it by hand, but if you get to a point where you can't turn it, you can put a quarter inch punch in there and just twist it a little bit easier. So this car's a little harder to get to than some others, but back your preload all the way off. That's gonna make it a lot easier to get the spring off. And then we're gonna put some spring compressors on to help us to get this retainer all the way out. So we'll go to that point. Continue to put longer springs than what the total length of the shock is. So there's some preload on there and you can't get the retainer off. So these spring compressors, you can get at AutoZone, O'Reilly, pretty much any auto parts store. They're not very expensive. There's way nicer setups that we have and we use a lot, but these are very inexpensive. You can even rent them at an auto parts store. Um, I think the last set I bought were $39. So it's an easy way to compress your springs. Just you have to have an air impact or a larger impact to, and just do both sides evenly. So do one side and then the other and just work your way up until you get it loose enough that the retainer will come off. So we're able to get the spring compressors tight enough where we're able to remove that lower retainer. And then we're just going to slide the main off and set it to the side. Your tender. And then you're going to reuse your divider, so hang on to this. Um, next step is going to be grabbing the smaller of the two crossover nut or crossover rings and remove these four little pinch bolts. So what we have is a two piece crossover nut. So uh, Walker Evans on the velocity shocks and a lot of their shocks actually, you can actually thread a crossover nut on from the bottom like on a Fox or on an exit shock. So this is a two piece style. We loosen these four pinch bolts. We'll put it kind of in an arbitrary area right now until we set it a little bit later. So I'm going to go ahead and back these off and, and throw the crossover nuts on. All right, so we've got the stock springs off. We put the crossover nut in place. Now you're gonna put the new tender and your stock divider. On this tender, um, put the tighter coils or the progressive side up. It'll be easier to get to your crossover nut that way. And then your divider, short lip up, long lip down to the main, just like stock. And then your new main spring. Make sure you get your decal facing the right way. Slide all that up. And then your stock retainer goes back on. Hook back up your shock bolt. And then we're going to set the preload. So the reason I'm going to hook the shock bolt back up is so that you can make sure that the shock is held at full extension. So some of these shocks, the IBPs, um, the newer walkers, these velocities on the Turbo S, they have an internal spring that basically limits the shock and keeps it from clanking at full extension. But if you hook it up, you can, you can kind of see that it moves about, I don't know, half an inch on this one. The IBPs will move a little bit more than that. So I like to hook it up because usually the weight of the, the hub and the arms and everything will hold it out so that you can get a correct preload setting. Then you're going to turn your preload down to zero. 
and depending on the weight of the car, any accessories that you have, the preload is going to vary, but um, what we recommend on the front is that you put four turns, anywhere between two and six turns really, depending on how heavy the car is. If this had a winch, it might require a little bit more preload to get the ride height correct. So on this one, we're gonna grab a marker and mark it, and we're just gonna go four revolutions. So, so that's pretty close to four turns. And you can check that with the measuring tape from side to side. I know what my other side was set at, and we're really close. So probably within a sixteenth. So once you get your preload set, again, that's a starting point so that you can put it down and go and try it and then readjust based on what you get for a ride height measurement. Uh, next thing you're gonna do is set this crossover nut. And so I'm gonna position the spring a little bit so I can see those little screws a little better. And this needs to be at one inch to start. And I don't know, it's gonna be hard to see on the camera, but there's actually a lip up in here that the spring divider contacts the crossover nut. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is set that at the one inch gap. So just with a measuring tape, you can kind of eye across and get it right at one inch. And again, that's a good starting point. The crossover nut is what you're gonna to use to tune your bottoming resistance. So this particular customer, he does quite a bit of trail riding and then you know some desert and open dune riding and stuff. But because of the type of riding he's doing, we're gonna set it at one inch and then we're actually going to remove his front sway bar um, with this spring combination. That's one thing we really like to do is get rid of the front sway bar so that the car works a lot better in the rocks. Um, you get less feedback in the wheel and because of the way we have the springs tuned, it still handles the roll stability really well. Um, so I'm going to tighten these up and pull his sway bar and then we're going to move to the back of the car. All right, so we've moved to the rear. A uh, couple things you're going to want to do. You're going to want to move your bump stop up out of the way so you can get your retainer off. So, big flat blade screwdriver. And then your preload nut. You're going to want to back this off all the way. So, a punch works good to stick in these little holes on the preload nut. And you're going to back it all the way off. And then we're still going to need some spring compressors because, again, for some reason they see the need to put springs that are longer than the shock on and make it hard on you. So once you get it loose, though, you can usually turn it by hand. out and hook up these retainers and then make some noise with the impact and get these stock springs off so we can put the, the new springs on.
container. Pull your stock thing off. Pop pin to the retainer. You're going to reuse the retainer, so hang on to that. We'll go get our crossover nut and basically repeat the same thing we did on the front and the rear. Next step is going to be to put these two piece crossover nuts on. We pulled the four screws out, and then you just gotta take your time and make sure that you get them lined up because they they like to go to a different thread position, so they should spin freely. So this one's actually still off. So even if you're off half a thread or a thread. Um, It'll still spin, but it should sp should spin freely, and also the two halves will mate together, and you won't have a giant gap if they're in the correct position. So, and then put your little screws back in, and leave it loose because we'll have to set this after the preload has been set correctly. So that's an important step. You can't can't really set the crossover correctly until your preload and your ride height is all dialed in. So we're going to give you some starting points and then from there you can tune your ride height kind of based on the, the extra weight and stuff that you have. Cage, doors, roof, winch, box, full size spare, all that kind of stuff. It's going to affect your preload setting but we'll give you a good starting point. So just like that, should spin up and down nicely. And then we'll go to the springs. All right, so we got the crossover nut on there and we're gonna slide the new tender. Your stock spring divider, same direction as it came off your new main. And these springs, when you pull them out of the box, they come in, they're gonna be labeled. So pay attention to that labeling, it'll tell you exactly where they go. It's pretty easy to, to tell, but just by following the instructions, but if you pay attention to that labeling, it makes it really easy. We hook back up this nut so that it pulls the shock open. It makes it a little bit easier to put this retainer on. Okay, so retainer, divider, your crossover's inside the tender, and then you're gonna spin your preload down. And on the rear, uh, you'll see that we're gonna tell you somewhere between four and six turns is a good starting point. Doesn't mean that that's actually where you're gonna end up. Just depends on how heavy your car is, if you have extra weight like we talked about earlier. So start at zero, make sure that it's fully extended, turn it down until it touches, and then just count four turns. Okay, and then I have a measurement from the other side, so I'm just going to check to make sure we're right the same. And then we're going to set the crossover nut. So crossover ring or crossover nut needs to be right around four and a half inches on this car. And that's a good starting point. Anywhere between four and four and a half with this spring setup is going to work well in all conditions. What you'll find with the crossover nut is that it's really sensitive. So a couple of turns on this could mean the difference between your car bottoming out or geeing out and not. So, you know, two revolutions can make a huge difference here. So it's very sensitive. Whereas preload, you know, you'll have to do two to four turns of adjustment to get any kind of a ride height change. The crossover, just two turns with that nut closer to the divider is gonna make a huge difference on bottoming resistance. Um, tighten back up your bolts. Set your clickers in the middle so that you can go out and tune and you're done. So it's easy as that. A few hand tools and a jack in your driveway and you can install this kit on your own. So we've got everything installed. Our preload and our crossover is set to the recommended starting points. Um, just a quick note on that. One reason that we like to count the turns from zero versus just giving you an arbitrary number is because springs do vary by eighths of an inch from 
every manufacturer, I don't care who it is. And also, uh, you know, depending on the weight that you're carrying, you're gonna need a different preload setting. And you really need to get your preload set before you set your crossover because as you change preload, your crossover is automatically going to, to give you a different number. So that's why we set the preload the way we do. Um, make sure everything's tight. You can double check, um, you know, right side to left side, make sure that they measure close to the same after you've done your turns of preload and then set your clicker. Um, we usually recommend that you just move it to the middle of its adjustment range. I believe these have 12 clicks, so we usually just put it right in the middle at six. So you can close it or open it all the way um, and then count out to six clicks. And then you know that you're in the middle of your adjustment range. And then put the car down, <clears throat> check your ride height, go and drive it, take it on a little test drive um, and, and recheck your ride height. Make sure the car, at least on these razors, you want it to be fairly level. You don't want to see a whole bunch of um, rake or you don't want the front end way higher than the back end. Try and get the car level so that when you load it up with gear or people, it weight transfers correctly and you're not too, too stiff or, or too soft in the rear. Um, Again, if you have questions, you can reach out to us online uh, or give us a call. Remember zebrosracing.com for all of your UTV suspension needs.